the writings of Benjamin uh, Zev Kahana of Blessed Memory. This next year is uh, on Independence Day. And this was written in 1995 uh, by Benjamin. Miracles of Galut and Miracles of Geula. At first glance, the following article criticizes what is termed as the Haredi camp. But such an observation is a superficial one. Ideological distinctions between religious, Haredi, etc. have been blurred long ago, for the good and for the bad. More than a few Jews who see themselves as Zionists will find themselves included in this criticism. While on the other hand, deep changes are taking place in sections of the Haredi camp. In this context, we point out to what Rabbi Meir Parush from the city of Hall in Jerusalem said to an interior in, oh, to a, with, with an interview with Kol uh, Yisrael. When questioned about Agudat Yisrael's opposition to the evacuation of Hebron, the interviewer asked, so you too are for the concept of a greater Israel? And the answer, without any of the usual evasions, is there a Jew who is against a greater Israel? Does this point, does this not, does this not point to a change? Okay, and now on to the article. A few months ago, a flyer was distributed in the synagogues which commemorated five full years since the miracles of the Gulf War, describing how this day is worthy for the saying of Hallel and praise to God. This reminds us of how, at the end of the same Gulf War, several communities said Hallel. All this comes to mind as Independence Day approaches, for in so many of the circles who emphasize the miracles of the Gulf War, it was the first time in this generation that they praised God for saving us in a war situation. Is this not strange? Miracles indeed occurred in that war, but why is it easier for them to see the miracles of the Gulf War as something worthy of Hallel and gratitude for God, and not the miracles of the wars of 1948 or of 1967? When the danger was so much more imminent and all the experts predicted total annihilation, God, God forbid, even military predictions had us winning, were forecasting cash, casualties of 50,000 in the Six-Day War, and all realistic forecasts for the War of 1948 predicted a total wipeout. And in the end, we scored awesome victories, conquering huge parts of er Eris Yitzhak in both wars yearning for the f familiar kind of miracles. The answer lies in the difficulty of so many to comprehend the new type of miracles which God has granted us in this era. They are miracles of redemption. The miracles of the Gulf War were not of the classic Galut style and thus easy to comprehend. They were the miracles of the familiar sort with a Gentile tyrant and Gentile tyrant, decrees evil against the Jews, and the Jews sit passively praying to God who cancels the decree, and the story finishes less bad than expected. This approach is probably what created the opposition to a preemptive strike against Iraq, for such a deed would mess up the usual script of the Galut miracle, where the Jew cries and waits for the miracle in this case scurrying into a sealed room like a roach with a gas mask. The great miracles that took place during the first half of the state of Israel's existence belong to a new and different category of miracles, a category which had not yet been known and seen since the days of Hashmonim. They are miracles of redemption, or they can also be termed miracles of Kedush Hashem. Not only does this bad decree get canceled, but as a result of the Goy trying to wipe Israel off of the map, the Jewish nation performs God's will, returning fire to the enemy and the enemy of Hashem. And we forge ahead. We attain sovereignty over our land, conquering huge parts of the land of Israel, 
and sanctifying the name of God before the astonished eyes of the Gentiles. If we look at the Jewish holidays, which have been set down as days for giving praise and thanks to God, we will notice that all these holidays can be classified as miracles of redemption. True, according to Halakha, one must give praise for any salvation from death. In any case, not every salvation was set down as a day of praise and gratitude, like Hanukkah, Purim, or even Pesach were. Purim at first glance belongs, belongs to the miracle of Galut, th that category, and even took place in the Galut. But no, if the story of Purim had ended with the canceling of Haman's decree, the story would have been defined as one of the miracles of the Galut, and probably would have never been celebrated for all generations. But actually, on Purim, the decree was never canceled. Ashus Verosh simply allowed the Jews to strike back, and the salvation arose due to the acts of the Jews who took revenge against those who wanted to wipe them out. Until fear of the Jews fell upon them, it was not just some passive salvation, but rather a very active vengeance against the enemy. For this celebration, uh, we celebrate the holiday. The proof is that on the 15th of Adar, Shushan Purim, the holiday is celebrated only because of the second day in which Esther requested to continue taking vengeance against the enemy after the salvation had already been achieved. And so we see on Purim a rare situation on which miracles of redemption occur in the exile, while in contrast to this, we saw during the Gulf War how miracles of Galut can occur in the land of Israel. And we also celebrate Independence Day, Yom Yerushalayim, saying Hallel, not only for the quantitative aspect of the miracles of 1948 and 1967, which were greater than all the miracles that occurred in the time of the Hashmanim, but also thank God for the qualitative aspects of the miracles, which were a sanctification of God's name, a redemption of the people and its land, that is a forging ahead whose heart cannot grow warm from the memory of the Israeli soldiers marching forward into the Sinai Desert and the Golan, Yehuda, Shamron, when the names of Shechem, Hebron, Jericho, and the Temple Mount became real again. The Mashiach was knocking on the door, and the spirit of purity passed through the entire nation. Enough spitting on the miracles. Yes, we know that those last three dots we wrote above are not something to be happy about, for everything started going downhill from there. Since then, the grand spirit that has been injected into the people has been forcibly smothered out by the evil Jewish governments. In a short period of time, we saw an obscene spitting on the miracle and on abandonment of lands that we captured. But God is not at fault for this, and so we cannot quit giving him praise for the miracles that he granted. On the contrary, we must recall these great miracles, gather strength, and vomit out of power those betrayers of God's miracles thereby taking the reins and going in the direction of those gates which Hashem opened for us in order that we may bring the complete redemption. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So if you caught real quick um, what he was saying during the, uh, the miracle of Purim is that it, it was a miracle in a way that God did not come down from heaven and annul the decree. The decree still stood against the Jews um, when uh, they were in Persia. But what happened was, is that Hashasverosh allowed through Esther and, and Mordechai, uh, allowed us to strike back at our enemies. And it's just amazing that this was written, okay, back, as I said, in 1995. And we're talking about now, this, I'm, I'm, I'm recording this, the year 2010, uh, 5770 in the Hebrew calendar. And it's amazing how uh, we have yet another enemy staring us in the face right now, which is Iran. And we should, uh, of course, uh, accordingly uh, do what we need to do to counteract this uh, terrible situation. Again, Writings of Rabbi Benjamin Azev.
Kahana. May his blood be avenged.